Welcome to the FCA Leadership Forum 5 Question Series. I'm Bob Ackerman, the Editor-in-Chief of Signal Magazine and Signal Connections. Our guest today is Paul M. Cafone, President and Chief Executive Officer of CACI International and Chairman of the Board of FC International. Mr. Cafone has more than 30 years of senior-level executive experience in business development, strategic planning, and federal market operations. His responsibilities include executing his company strategy to help the U.S. government meet some of its most pressing national security challenges. Paul, thank you very much for coming. Welcome to FCA. I'm happy to be here. What would you say are the characteristics in an individual that mark that person as a potential leader? Well, I would think the number one, in my mind, the number one characteristic is integrity. Integrity is sort of the bedrock of leadership. Without that, uh, we don't have a franchise as leaders. So integrity, trust, respect for the individual, personal courage, these are the things I think of as uh, most important traits for leaders, potential and existing leaders. That said, what is the most important skill for a leader? I think the most important skill for every leader is communication skills. If uh, there's one common denominator observable amongst all great leaders, it's the ability to communicate effectively. And uh, I think you, you, if you look through history and think about the people you admire most as leaders, you'll find that among other skill sets, they stood out in their ability to communicate. Well, when do you know your leadership style is working? What are the indicators? Well, I think the things that I look for in terms of feedback on whether or not the leadership style I'm using is working is the enthusiasm level of the, the group I'm leading. If you find genuine enthusiasm in the, in the organization and it's not contrived, it's sort of spontaneous enthusiasm, that'd be the number one indicator. The other indicator is uh, when people are uh, choosing to uh, work with you uh, as a leader. So uh, they're volunteering uh, from wherever they are. If you have a long line of people trying to work with you, then you're probably a very good leader. What was your greatest failure and what did you learn from it? Well, there are so many of them that we're, I don't know which one to choose, really. But uh, in terms of uh, greatest failures, I, I think of uh, two or three. One, early, very early in my career, I was given an assignment to lead an organization on the West Coast uh, that was growing very rapidly. It was during the uh, build-up, Reagan build-up years, and uh, we were growing extremely fast, and uh, the organization was having performance problems. And I arrived on the scene and uh, sort of made some assumptions about what was the underlying causes for the performance problems and it turned out that uh, I was completely wrong about that. That it was, uh, my assumption was that the people didn't have the right work ethic and that uh, therefore the performance problems or attitudes or work ethics and uh, it turned out it wasn't that at all. The people had excellent work ethics and attitudes but they weren't al were not aligned on a common uh, vision or a value system and uh, we went to work after a year and a half of uh, failing at trying to get a turnaround to occur in terms of performance. I came to the conclusion that I needed some help and I got some professional assistance in uh, diagnosing the issue and it turned out in Southern California people are primarily there for lifestyle not necessarily for work style. and. Uh, the learning was that we needed to energize the organization around a common vision with a set of value, underlying values and vision and an action program that was built on, on the vision. And these, this was in the early days when people seldom use that word vision. Today it's heavily or if not overused. But uh, we, we set about with some professional help from a, a professor at the San Diego State University. We set about uh, building a, a value, an explicit statement of values for the organization and a vision for the organization and built a set of strategies and actions that helped to achieve that vision over time. And that was the, uh, the failure was uh, to come in with a built-in assumption that 
if there's performance issues, it's related to either attitude or uh, work ethic, when in fact it was really a good group of people that were waiting for someone to organize them around a common vision. And uh, that was one failure, uh, but there have been a lot of failures along the way. And uh, I like to think of them as stumbles as opposed to failures, and that, that none of them ended up as a failure, although they may have had that uh, uh, appearance at some point uh, along the journey. And I think that is another quality of a, of a great leader, a good leader, is, is their ability to see uh, stumbles and learn from them and recover and uh, ultimately drive success. But uh, I could go on and on with the examples of that where I have personally stumbled and uh, picked myself up and uh, sorted it out. Who are your heroes? My, I have a, a large collection of heroes, but uh, the ones that come most immediately to mind have uh, the common characteristic of communication. And there are people who uh, saw, uh, saw progress as uh, the achievement of something that would have lasting and enduring value. So if you think in our history of people who had opportunity to lead and uh, uh, sort of uh, reached for the high ground and sought to get people organized around uh, uh, objectives that had enduring, lasting value, uh, those people. And I think the ones I think of are uh, JFK. He, his uh, great contribution or his legacy in my mind certainly is the space program. And if you remember at that time, at the beginning of the space program, uh, we were really behind the USSR in terms of space exploration. And the subtitle underneath that, the subtext underneath that is, we were therefore uh, behind in the Cold War because space represented the high ground from which to fight the Cold War. And he rallied the nation, uh, not around the Cold War, he rallied the nation around the challenge of discovery and exploration in space. Uh, the subtext was always, I think, uh, preparing technologically to deal with the adversary. So I think of uh, Kennedy in that sense. I also think of him in the sense of how he rallied and appealed to the goodwill of the young people in America to support the Peace Corps activity. Peace Corps was a notion about giving of yourself and uh, contributing to mankind. That he really others have as well along the way, but that was sort of one of his big legacy items. I also think of people like Teddy Roosevelt as a hero. Teddy Roosevelt uh, has a, is a great American persona, uh, the only person to have won both the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor and the Nobel Peace Prize. And uh, his, uh, his, he's a hero to me, uh, mostly because of his uh, dogged determination and persistency. As a child, he was sick. A good part of his youth, he was sick, and he had to work to overcome those physical challenges uh, to accomplish all that he did, but uh, he's probably the most persistent. He also led our country into uh, the status of world power from uh, emerging, uh, an emerging democracy to a le world-leading uh, power. So he's, a, he's another one. Uh, Ronald Reagan for his efforts to end the Cold War, having the insight that he could, uh, he needed to rally the American people to push the adversary to the brink economically, and uh, he, he in fact uh, did that very well. Uh, others, Martin Luther King is another great hero of mine because he saw, uh, he saw a dire need and he filled the void and was a great leader amongst his people. Another great communicator uh, and I could go on and on. Uh, history books are littered, literally littered with uh, great examples of uh, leaders who are heroes of mine. So those are a few. Paul, thank you for giving us your insight and your perspective on leadership. Thank you very much for coming and good luck on all your endeavors. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with you today.